So as you know, the Nobel Week Dialogue is mainly about discussion. And now I'm very pleased to have the chance to have a short discussion with the uh, 2006 recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, Mohammed Yunus, about this issue, these issues of poverty, food, and malnutrition. So, Mohammed Yunus. Thank you very much. So first, let me ask you, is poverty inevitable? Oh, none at all. Why should any human being be suffering from this uh, humiliation and also condemnation and such a state of affairs that uh, for no fault of his or her own is, uh, is uh, something... Poverty is not uh, something coming from the poor people. It's not a self-created phenomenon. It's an externally imposed phenomenon. Uh, so if it's externally imposed phenomenon, uh, so we can remove that and let people come out. It's, a, it's a something you put a person in a sort of a prison, can't take any action on his or her own. And that's what the poverty is all about. So uh, it's, it's a fault in the system that we developed ourselves, the institutions that we created, policies that we pursue. So if you say, okay, we ignore poverty, that means uh, you don't want to go back and look, look around what you have done to the billions of people on this planet. Mm. And where should the solution come from? Is it from... Change the, the system. Change the system. Basically. Uh, all the things, uh, for example, uh, one of the work that we got involved with is uh, bringing financial services to the poor people. Why did we have to do that? Why didn't the financial institution themselves create in a way so that it's available to everybody? Nobody's denied. All the arguments that were giving us right from the beginning when we were struggling to draw their attention that your system is wrong, they said, we don't do it because uh, people are not creditworthy. And I first tried to understand what does it mean if people are not creditworthy. Then I realized that what a way they have uh, extracted themselves from this whole responsibility. I said, should banks decide that people, whether people are creditworthy or not? Or should it be raised in a different way? Uh, whether people should decide whether the banks are people-worthy or not? So this, this is how you have to... The questions are raised in a way so that it uh, protects you. Mm. Uh, then we went down and offered our financial services. And it worked. They were saying it won't work. Why, why you take the trouble of doing that? Hmm. So we started lending money and uh, people are paying back. And they said maybe it's a strange phenomenon in one country. If you do it in a bigger way in other countries, this will not work. Because this is very funny. You lend money to poor people and they're paying back. You expect us to believe that? And we say, why don't you come and check it out? And they did in many ways. And they said, well, maybe it's a funny thing in Bangladesh, but it cannot work elsewhere. But it worked everywhere. Now we are invited in the United States saying that it may work in other countries, but the United States is very different. It will not work here. I said, well, it should work anywhere because we are dealing with the people, not with the country. Hmm. So people need it and you provide it and they change their life. So they invited us to start a program in 2008 we called it Grameen America, and it started in Jackson Heights in New York City, in Queens. We had no idea whether it's going to work, but our farm believed that it should work because it works in any other situation. So what we did, we sent one of our managers in Bangladesh, in, in the village, who runs branches there, asked him to do it uh, in the United States. He came. And he set it up. I, I told him that, uh, forget about what you see in the United States. Your job is not to worry about the United States. Just do the work that you do in Bangladesh, exactly the same way. And precisely he did it, and it worked. Now we have 19 branches all over the United States uh, with 18, 85,000 borrowers it's all about in 11 cities in, Jackson, in uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Omaha, Nebraska, and many other cities. And it works perfectly. It's the payment is 99.5%. Uh, it's all about the individual, isn't it? 
It's about individual, it's about human beings. Mm. Human beings are willing, waiting for opening or opportunities. They have the talent, they're full of creative capacity. Each human being has unlimited creative capacity. But we created a system which kind of pushes it down rather than allow, help you to bring it out. Poverty is some kind of a barrier that you put around them so that they cannot explore themselves who you are, what you are capable of. So you open that up, suddenly they expose all kinds of possibilities inside of them. And their children take it up and make it further down, make it further uh, expansion of that capacity. Tell me a little about the networks you've set up in Bangladesh to um, uh, help relieve the problem of child malnutrition, your, your collaboration with Danone. It shows that it's an example of a big business taking on the, um, the, the challenge of social business. Yeah, when we're doing, again, the lending and financial institution, that arguments that we're making, see, the whole Grameen Bank was born uh, in the context of famine, people dying of hunger because mm. there's no food for them. So when you talk about famine, suddenly your attention is drawn to the food. Every history of famine, at least within the region that we are from, is not about food. Food was there. A reasonable amount of food is available. Simply people could not go and get it because they don't have the purchasing power. So it's the income. So I keep saying that so the most important thing in food is income. If you are looking at the feeding people and so on, so that people can feed themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is the number one responsibility, how to make that income possible for everybody so that they can claim their share in the food. That they can, first, that's the first thing. And then we saw that uh, not only food is important, the quality of food is important. Simply volume of food is important, but quality of the food is also important and more important than food itself. Uh, that we see after all this we have done in Bangladesh, reaching out so many families around the country, but it's still there's a problem of malnutrition. 48% mm. of the children of Bangladesh are malnourished. So what kind of nation you build with malnourished children? with the stunted growth, with stunted mental faculty and so on. So we thought we should do something. An opportunity came because Danone was very interested in what we do as social business. Uh, and we created a series of social businesses. These are businesses, again, I, I was talking about the changing the system. Mm. The system says the whole business should be based on personal interest. You should be maximizing the benefit from the business yourself. I said, that's the wrong interpretation of a human being. Human beings are not robots to make themselves enriched by doing things. I said, human being is a multidimensional being, not one dimensional being. It's selfish, at the same time selfless. The selfless part was never included in the business. So we created a series of businesses which fits into that category. Business to solve problem, rather than make money for themselves. That's what we call social business, non-dividend company to solve human problems. And we created a lot. And somehow Danone got interested in the subject because I speak about it, I wrote books about it. They wanted to meet me and discuss this. So mm -hmm. we met and out of that came a creation of a social business in Bangladesh, uh, a joint venture, Grameen and Danone, addressing the malnutrition of the children. It's a social business which produces a special kind of yogurt put all the micronutrients which are missing in the children, mm -hmm. vitamin, iron, zinc, iodine, etc., make it very cheap, yep. make it very delicious, so that poor children are attracted to it and can pay for it. And it became a successful business. People, are, children are eating it, they're overcoming their malnutrition, they're getting back their micronutrients. It is a social business because Danone doesn't want to make money out of it. It's, it as a social business, you can take back the investment money, but nothing beyond that. Okay. Everything is done to help solve the problem. Good. And that's been a wonderful taster for uh, further discussion of social business, the idea of business not being just for profit, but for problem solving. Absolutely. We'll talk about it later in the day, but I, of all people, mustn't go over time. So, may I thank you very much indeed thank for this you. taster. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.